Hey, what's up, fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily, and today I have a podcast with quite the summery knit lineup for you. So let's get started. For more high fiber knits elsewhere. I'm also on Instagram and Ravelry, both as high fiber knits. If you want to email me, I also have a Gmail account that's high fiber knits at gmail.com. Emails are loads of fun. Uh, so if you're looking for me, that's where you can find me. Today I have one finished object and two whips. Both of the whips are test knits, which is really exciting, and I'm really, really in love with both of these patterns. I'm very much looking forward to showing you what I have on the needles and telling you a bit more about the patterns. But before we get started, I want to get more consistent about mentioning my measurements uh, because one of the best things about knitting podcasts is that we can see what's going on and we get to see different garments and different finished objects on different bodies. Uh, but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to actually gauge through the camera what an individual's measurements are unless they actually say what they are. Um, one time I was working on a sock during a Zoom class and my prof was like, that looks like a really big sock. And I said, yeah, that's because I have really big feet. I'm like a size 10 women's US size. So I think it's like a 41 European. Uh, and my prof was like, that's crazy. I thought you were maybe like five foot two. Meanwhile, here I am five foot eight. So anyway, I am five foot eight. I weigh about 155 pounds. Um, I have a 37 inch bust. And in terms of like actual body composition, I am quite like lean slash muscular, but overall like quite rectangular. Like my shoulders, my ribs and my hips are all about the same width. So those are my measurements. Hopefully that's helpful. We're just gonna hop into my first or my only finished object for today. Here is my camisole number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And if you saw my last video, which was my sort of spring summer knitting plans, I was wearing this and I said I would be talking about it and therefore suggested that you subscribe if you wanted to see more. Here's more. So my camisole number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This is blocked. This is a size medium with zero modifications. I did everything exactly as the pattern said to, and I used exactly the needles and the yarn that the pattern said to. So this is Knitting for Olives Merino in the colorway Dusty Sea Green. For the size medium, I used two, two balls and maybe like a third of the third ball that the pattern called for, maybe more. Maybe I used about half of the third ball, which for the size mediums in the My Favorite Things knitwear patterns, I think she always recommends at least for the camisoles uh, that are knit in Knitting for Olive Yarns, she almost always recommends three balls for the size medium. And I've knit number two, number four, and now number five. And I've never really even gotten close to using the full three balls. And I knit this one full length. So this hits right at my hip bone. So it's not cropped, but it's also not like super long. Like it wouldn't cover like my butt if I was wearing leggings, for example. So that's sort of like the specs. I loved knitting this at first. I thought that the shaping to do all of this widening at the underarm was a lot of fun. But when it came time to knit the body, like you can see how long this is, like two by two rib on three millimeter needles. It was a bit of a slog, but 
totally and completely worth it. Like this is absolutely what I would call a modern classic in terms of design aesthetic and wearability. I think if you are comfortable wearing camisoles, it is incredibly flattering. I know they're not for everyone. I'm wearing camisole number four today. This is also a size medium in knitting for olive silk, but it's certainly stretched out a lot. Um, so I love camisoles. And I think if you enjoy camisoles, this is absolutely a very unique, very tasteful, very like contemporary aesthetic, awesome piece. Uh, what else? Okay, yeah, in terms of experience in knitting it, the first time I showed this, I talked about this little situation here and here where the provisional cast on shifted a half inch when I picked up the stitches to go down the front, down the back. When I picked up the stitches to go down the back. I thought that this was an error of my own, or at least I was able to rationalize it as an error of my own. Uh, and then some folks ended up telling me that no, that's just the nature of picking up stitches from a provisional cast on when you're working in rib. So that kind of made me feel better. <laughs> um, but if that happens to you, don't fret. That's just like the thing the pattern does. So no need to worry. Another thing, some folks have asked questions about this pattern and what I think about its wearability. As I said, I knit mine in merino and I actually wore mine to work. And at the school that I work at, I'm like half a teacher, half like a lab tech slash science lab coordinator. The school recently moved buildings. And so I'm sort of responsible for like relocating the science department and making sure all of like the lab stuff is good to go when they want to do experiments with the students and stuff. So I move around a lot and I wore this and I did get kind of sweaty and I still found it perfectly comfortable. So I definitely think that a fingering weight merino yarn, one that's more finely processed and probably like a thinner fiber slash micron slash, you, you know what I mean? Like a non-rustic yarn, uh, like a smoother, Merino yarn, I think is perfectly appropriate for like spring, summer weather. And here in Toronto, we do get the full spectrum of the seasons. I mean, I know in the States, like it can get to 50 degrees Celsius in some places. We don't really push it too far past 30 degrees here, I'd say, but that's still pretty toasty. And I still find this perfectly comfortable. So Merino, good summer yarn. I've also received some questions about the actual process and techniques for knitting this pattern. So for the hem, the pattern suggests that you bind off in pattern, which is basically just you knit the knits and you purl the purls and you take every second stitch or you take every first stitch, stitch off your needles, like over, like, you know, a very standard cast off. Um, but I was concerned to do that because I thought it might make this sort of baggy or not have enough stretch to get it over my body. So what I opted for instead is the Icelandic bind off, which is a like not the stretchy est, but a decently stretchy, I would say, cast off that gives a nice enough edge without being anywhere near as much work as a tubular bind off. I am knitting primarily on public transit now, so like buses and subways and trains and whatever. And so I was not prepared ment mentally, nor do I like physically have the space to be able to do like a full sewn bind off. So. The Icelandic bind off was a really great option because it just requires the two needles and then you snip at the end and pull the tail through the last loop. Very, very easy bind off. Um, every time I mention it to folks, they're like, oh, I've never heard of that. 
So I don't know if it goes by a different name or if it's just honestly an underappreciated cast off, but definitely worth a try if you're looking for a stretchy bind off that's not a tubular bind off for whatever reason. Another thing, and I'll show you later, is that the Icelandic cast off matches the German twisted cast on. So if you like like tubular something but can't do tubular, like if you like the cast on but you hate the bind off or vice versa, um, and you want to make sure your edges, like your necklines and your hems and etc., that they all match, uh, German twisted cast on matches Icelandic bind off. So that was the first thing I got some questions about. And the second thing I got some questions about, and this was honestly the thing that prevented me from knitting this for a while, is the double knitting here along the arm band. Now, this technique when I knit camisole number five was not new to me because I had just previously done it on the button band for my champagne cardigan by Petite Knit. Now, to do it on the Petite Knit cardigan, I don't think I would have been successful if I hadn't watched her tutorial video that's available on her website, because Petite Knit has so many excellent videos for a lot of the techniques that are used in her patterns. And I think that some of, if not all of them now, also have captioning in English. Uh, but if you're a visual learner and you're okay to learn just from the video without like audio, uh, I think it's very helpful to have watched this technique done before actually attempting it. The pattern didn't give any instructions for how do you connect it at the end under the arm, but I just ended up doing like a Kitchener graft uh, and I, I don't think it really caused any problems. I think it worked well enough for an armpit, right? So that was the other sort of thing I got questions about. You can see like this has been blocked. I do not find the underarm or the neckline to be tight at all. They're knit at the same needle size as the body. So it's not like there's a lot of cinching from going down and gauge. Any sort of cinching just comes from the nature of the stitch. But I think actually after blocking, I have a little more underarm depth than I would prefer. So I might see if I can shrink this a touch super, super carefully. Comment down below if you know a safe way that I can shrink this up. Do I need to like block it again in really hot water? Do I just need to dampen it and chuck it in the dryer and check it every couple of minutes and keep my fingers crossed that I don't destroy it? Like, if you've ever deliberately shrunken something that you're not felting, please let me know. I'd love to know. Because this is just a stellar, absolutely stellar pattern, phenomenal piece. I am just so happy every time I am wearing this, so. Camisole number five, buy my favorite things knitwear, size medium, knitting for all of Merino, dusty sea green, tremendous, fantastic, in love. It's great, it's so great. So, next up, I wanna talk about my two whips. I am working on two summer knits, they're test knits, for two different designers and it's actually the first time that I am doing two test knits at once and these are the first garments that I'm testing this like calendar year. I've test knit the Claudia gloves for Orsa Knits and I test knit the Selena socks for Professor Pearl but I haven't done any garments yet. So I was really excited for these. So the first one, probably not gonna come as a surprise to you. Uh, I am doing the test knit for the Summer Souffle by Penrose Knits. So this is what we've got so far. 
this yarn I'll talk about first is actually discontinued, but it's worth talking about. This is the Hayfield Traditional Double Knitting Pure Wool Superwash. Ta-da! This colorway is unnamed, it would appear, unless, let me take off the ball band. Yeah, there's no information about what the color is. See inside of label for care instructions. I lied. The shade color is called wine. I've shown this yarn like at least five times on this channel now, and this is the first I'm learning of its actual colorway color name. Anyway, I thrifted like 12 balls of this, and it's a true DK yarn, I believe. It's a true DK for 50 grams. It's 120 yards, which is 110 meters. And it's 100% wool. The gauge on this yarn is 22 stitches for 28 rows, which I got, I don't know if that's exactly the gauge I got, but I did knit a swatch. I know in my last podcast, I was like, I don't knit swatches. I don't knit swatches unless I'm test knitting, because that's like part and parcel, like that's part of the job. You swatch when you test knit. I should have clarified that because I think I just made myself look kind of terrible <laughs> because of that. It's fine to not swatch if you're just doing whatever for yourself. But if you're test knitting, it's your due diligence to swatch. And so I swatched and I swatched for test knits and I got the right gauge for the pattern. So um, I know some folks were struggling to get gauge with DK weight yarns, especially loose knitters. I usually actually knit on gauge for yarns, like what the ball band says is what I'll get, or I'm a bit tighter. So I had no problem getting gauge with DK. A lot of folks were struggling to get gauge with DK. And I think the reason for that is the pattern calls for two strands of knitting for olive cotton merino, like held double. And that's a light fingering. So light fingering and light fingering gives you a light DK or like a heavy sport, not necessarily a DK. So Laura being an absolute superstar, was like, okay, I'm just gonna do the maths for two gauges, the true DK and the light DK. So amazing. Like just the fact that she was open to do that, incredible. The pattern, let me double check. I've pulled up both patterns. I'm testing on my computer so I can tell you all the things. The pattern has many, many sizes. It has 12, okay, 12 sizes. We'll start with that. There's 12 sizes, two gauges, and then, and then because the summer souffle, like if I'm holding this up to myself, obviously it's not blocked yet. But the summer souffle in comparison to the chunky souffle and the like original souffle is meant to be more of a fitted t-shirt style. It's got ribbing at the neckline instead of the I cord, similar with the sleeves cuffs. So it's meant to be more fitted. Because of that, there's not as much wiggle room with respect to differences in proportions. So folks, for example, having the same bust size, but very different biceps circumferences. So then Laura was like, all right, everybody is a unique flower, beautiful flower. I am going to adapt the pattern so that you can, if you're knitting a size three body, knit a size four sleeve. Or if you're knitting a size four body, knit a size three sleeve, depending on what's gonna work for you. So I don't think, actually I think she has shared that version with the tester so far, but also just like totally and completely awesome that even through like multiple iterations of the souffle, Laura's still doing these new and different things to be more like size inclusive, but just like I guess body inclusive because like 12 sizes, arm options, gauge options, uh, really you can get the perfect fit for you. 
So where am I at with this? I mentioned when I was talking about my cami number five that the Icelandic bind off matches the German twisted cast on. So that's what you're looking at here. This is the German twisted cast on, which is sort of characterized by, I don't know how well you can see. I gotta hide my face in order for you to see. It's kind of characterized by these little like pearl bumpies that you get, but I still think it's like a nice, pretty neat edge. So I did a German twisted cast on for the neckline because I don't know how to do a tubular cast on slash. I've gotten away with not doing tubular cast on so far and I don't feel like I'm missing out. So I did the German twisted cast on for the neck. I am knitting a size four. I'm knitting a size four, which would be the size I'd knit for myself, but I'm actually knitting this for my nunna or my grandmother who is several inches shorter than I am, maybe almost a full foot shorter than I am, but same bust size, very similar like proportions otherwise, um, just because like you can see this color. Actually, it's not, I keep saying this color is like not my color. It's not terrible, but it's not something I'd pick for myself over other colors. Um, anyway, knitting size four, this is going to be for my nonna. I have done the yoke, which was a ton of fun. I haven't done a circular yoke in over a year. And I forgot how like simple a circular yoke can be compared to a raglan. I feel like raglans are a little bit more brain intensive because you need to keep track of your rows a bit more instead of just like measure a distance or like knit a certain length, increase row, knit a certain length, increase row, like much simpler, I think, than uh, like a raglan, especially stylized raglan. So the yoke very good very clear instructions the ruffle is gonna go along this pearl bump ridge which i already picked up the stitches for the ruffle once and the cable on the fixed circular that i used was just remarkably like comically small i was not going to be able to increase the number of stitches to complete the ruffle and have them fit on that needle like the stitches as they are did not fit really on the needle. So I yanked that out and I'll try again. I'll have to like MacGyver, like connect some shorter cables together to get a longer cable uh, and that should work. But I still have the bottom of my body on my biggest cable. So the ruffle, the trademark ruffle is going to go there and then I've knit one sleeve so far. Fastest sleeve I've ever knit. Fastest sleeve I've ever knit. It's, <laughs> there's not much else to say. This, the souffle, what's really wonderful about it is the techniques are quite simple, but it's got just such a distinctive look to it. Like you recognize a souffle now. If you've seen one souffle, like you know what a souffle is. So, this is where we are. There's, today's May 16th. So there's about 20 days left in the test knit, but because there's been several souffles already, uh, the only requirements are the yoke, the ruffle, and one sleeve be done. So really, once I've done the ruffle, I'm done the test knit, but I could feasibly have the entire thing done by the 6th of June. My nonna's turning 80 this summer in July. She just wants this done in time for her birthday, which it absolutely will be. I'm excited to see what happens to this once it's blocked because this neckline will definitely open up a lot. I'm just very excited for this because I know my grandmother's going to appreciate it so much. And it's a really great test knitting community on Instagram as well. Laura's super responsive. Everybody is like very engaged and making insightful comments and feedback. I think this is just gonna be a very special, a very, very special pattern 
There's also a lot of people using different fibers. Some folks are doing linen, some folks are doing cotton, cotton and wool. I've got 100% wool going, so just like, the possibilities truly are endless. And part of me is thinking I could knit one of these for myself just without the ruffle, just do like a cropped circular yoke tee. We'll see, there'll probably be more of these in my future. So the Summer Souffle by Laura from Penrose Knits. We're well on our way. My, my next whip is very confusing to look at right now. I am testing the Nurture Bralette by Celine Phaeton Designs and I am really, really, really excited to make this. The Nurture Bralette is one of the only bralettes I have ever seen that like knitted bralette patterns I've ever seen that actually accounts for like breast shape and differences in breast shapes. There are a lot of patterns that sort of are like you can do some calculations and like make this part bigger or smaller or wider or whatever but this pattern applies techniques that like actually mold the cup to shape your breast properly. So it's just, I'm super impressed with the thoughtfulness of this design. There are nine sizes, but again, within each of those nine sizes, there are multiple options for how to do the shaping depending on the size and shape of your breast so that you can get the perfect fit for yourself. The smallest size is 20, 3.5 inches for a finished bust and the largest size is 53.5 inches but that is with eight inches of negative ease so or six to eight inches of negative ease so really the smallest size is intended for like a 28 to 30 inch bust and the largest size is intended for about a 60 inch bust and again that's just like bust around this way it doesn't account for this, if that makes sense. So I think just like the fact that the pattern accommodates for all of those different possibilities is absolutely beautiful. It uses a fingering weight yarn or two lace weight yarns held double. I have opted for my Knit Picks Hawthorne and this is the colorway Burlingame. I've shown this a few times before. It is just their regular sock yarn. There's some nylon content and mostly wool in this base. It looks like it's a two ply to me and this particular colorway is mostly like peachy orangey but there are like they're not even pops. They're sort of like greens and blues and purples blended into the colorway and it's not really a colorway that I expected to love as much as I did when I saw it for the first time. I thought originally they were it was going to become socks when I purchased it, but moving in toward the summer, I really got in my head the idea of like a fun colorful bralette with a pair of like colorful knitted shorts as well. So this I think was a great option. For this pattern. This is how it's knitting up. And this is quite accurate in terms of the vibrancy and the like actual value or like chroma. Am I using the right words? Like just this is accurate. This is what the fabric is looking like in real life. I love how there's just no like stripiness happening, no color pooling happening. It's just kind of like a watercolory kind of blend of soft, but not really pastel spring slash summer colors. So this is one of the front 
cups pre shaping for the actual curve of the bust. Uh, the construction of this is really, really interesting. <laughs> Unlike anything I've done before, you start with the back and then without giving too much away, you start with the back, you connect the back pieces with an I cord and then you go down a bit and then you do the front pieces and uh oh do I have a twisted no I don't I was very scared I, I started the front right strap or the front right cup on the public transit this afternoon and I was very concerned that I was going to uh, set myself up in a twisted like I was scared I was gonna end up twisting my pieces because it is seamless uh, which means if something gets twisted then I don't know what protocol would be for going backwards uh, but basically no seams so it's a very interesting construction I really appreciate that the straps are actually not an I cord and what I think is important about that is once they're blocked they will stretch quite a bit but what I've experienced with I cord bind offs and I cord straps is that they kind of block out or stretch to their limit and then completely lose their elasticity whereas this I think the stitch pattern is not only interesting I don't think that's gonna focus well. Let's see if I like touch the screen. Does that help? I have no idea. I'm also not wearing my glasses, so it's really hard for me to tell if anything's focused. But anyway, it's not an I cord strap, and so I think it'll keep some of its elasticity for that reason. Uh, there's certainly a lot of ends that will need to be woven in, but. I'm also well on my way with with this. The deadline for this test knit is a couple weeks following the souffle test knit. So although this is the first time I am doing two tests overlapping one another, there's more than plenty of time, I think, to get them both done. Even if I only spend my time on the public transit knitting, like I could very easily get these done without having to put like extra time beyond that in. Some other notes about, excuse me, excuse me, let me have a sip of water. Nothing says romanticize your life like buying wine glasses from the thrift store to drink your water. I just feel so bougie and it's just good old tap water <laughs> from my thrifted wine glass okay um a couple other things about the nurture bralette the pattern is also going to have some modification options uh the pattern as is does feature like a lace ribbed hem but I suspect that if and when I knit more of this pattern, you could easily just do like a plain ribbed hem if the lace aspect of it isn't really your thing or if you just want something with a more simplified look. Uh, and she's also including options for if you don't want it to necessarily be like a right on the ribs or like right at the underbust kind of bralette if you want more of a long line option. Um, Feasibly, it could be extended to a full length tank top, I guess, uh, but just the option for that modification is also going to be included in the pattern. Really great. <laughs> hmm. I'm just like scrolling through. I will say, <laughs> when I received this pattern for the Nurture Bralette, uh, I was a little scared because, <laughs> oh my god, I just projectile like spit a little bit I was scared because the pattern is 25 pages long because 
it is so thorough and so well detailed and it includes the lace chart it includes the written instructions for the lace it includes all of the modifications that are possible in full detail calculations for the lace repeats as well as do 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 uh, detailed descriptions for techniques and links to videos on those techniques and short row calculation charts for all of the breast curve options for all of the nine sizes so most of those pages like toward the end are like not really pattern proper they're sort of the additional like mathy bits that are really helpful to have like size seven of the bralette alone has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven different like breast curve options for like from a one inch curve all the way to like a seven inch curve so it's just like really really inclusive i think um and i'm looking forward to seeing what folks finished objects end up looking like. I know because of the nature of it being a bralette, there might be some limitations or some folks may not feel as comfortable modeling the finished object on their own bodies. Um, I'm still figuring out how I personally am going to go about doing that as well because, you know, I choose to be here on the internet, but I am also still a teacher. And so um, figuring out, you know, like, how much should I show? Even though it's like knitting and there isn't anything necessarily scandalous about this pattern. Um, just being aware that, you know, I have an online presence and people do see this. <laughs> And with the nature of algorithms, the probability that my content actually show up for people in my proximity, i.e. students, is kind of high uh, by like compared to just like random other people, you know, obviously assuming that like these people are interested in knitting content, I guess. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. All I'm saying is I'm really happy that this pattern is size inclusive. And I hope that, this is the point that I wanted to make, I hope that knitting and wearing this garment makes the people who make it or receive it feel really good about themselves and feel very empowered. I think, you know, there's a handful of like summer knit alongs going on right now that are focused on knitting bralettes and knitting camisoles or tank tops and things like that. Um, one of them, I know Stacy from Stress Knits is doing the Thank You Next knit along, which is bralettes and camis. And I think there's one called the Tea of Dreams that's teas and camis. Um, yeah, I'm just like really happy that those knit alongs are happening because I think that as far as like knitted camisoles and tank tops go there's kind of like two groups there's people who are like absolutely love this staple I personally enjoy knitting summery tops more even than sweaters I would wager uh, and then there's folks who are like definitely not for me I don't feel great in them uh, and that's totally fair that's totally valid but if it's something that you're not sure about, you're like, maybe I'd like to knit this, but I'm not too sure like how wearable it'll be or if I'll actually feel comfortable in it. Having the knit along aspect and seeing what other people are doing and hearing other people talking about all of these summary patterns, I think can be very helpful for just like learning, finding inspiration, finding some encouragement as well because like the social media knitting community is just like one big massive group of cheerleaders 
or at least that's what my experience has been. I know I can't speak for everyone uh, and I don't necessarily think it's a universal opinion, but my point being the fact that there is a community that can like support you in finding joy in knitting and wearing summer garments is a good thing to lean into. Maybe that was completely incoherent. I don't even know. I feel like in my brain that was incoherent. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, it's actually starting to get dark out. I mean, it's actually after 7 p.m. now and there's enough light for me to be filming, which makes me happy. But at the same time, I'm like, shucks, it's 7. <laughs> And there's other things to do still. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed listening to me go on about camisole number five and two of my favorite test knits ever just because the patterns are awesome 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 and I will link all of the makers the designers um both I'll try to find both their Instagram well, obviously I have their Instagrams, um, but if they have a website or just other platforms where their patterns can be found, I will include those as well. So thanks for hanging out. I'm going to stop talking now because I'm about to go into a transition meeting for my student council and I know I'm going to be talking a lot more. So I'm just going to wish you all health and happy knitting. Bye, everyone.